everything is turning upside down. Telling us that love is who I am. You and me are not that far apart. Yeah, we're beating the same heart. We've been together from the start. Tell me, can you hear? Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it and know that we are one. Welcome to a, a course of love. Welcome to a course of love. of love I love being with you right now right now you don't have to believe it accept it welcome it some of it's going to be very hard to believe but if you use the ideas you will recognize that the ideas are true yeah When me we're not that far apart Yeah, we're beating the same heart We've been together from the start Oh yeah Tell me, can you hear it? Can you hear it? Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it Guess what? We are one. Welcome to A Course of Love. I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad to see you. Welcome, Marlon. Welcome, Latasha. Welcome, Myrna. Welcome, Becky. Welcome, Carla. Welcome, Holly. And you are I want to welcome all of you to A Course of Love. Ah, that was Brother John Christmas at johnchristmas.com. Welcome to A Course of Love. Welcome, Grace. Welcome to A Course of Love. I'm Earl Purdy, and we know that we have a very, very, very deep class that we do on Thursday nights. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not really, I don't think, for someone that's just looking for a really light kind of glossing over the truth. The course of love is to the heart 
as the Course in Miracles is to the Mind. And tonight we're going to do chapter 23. And chapter 3, chapter, chapter 23 is called The Freedom of the Body. The Freedom of the Body. Chapter 23 in the Course of Love. And it's on page 154 in the Course of Love. Chapter 23, Freedom of the Body. I'm going to go through each paragraph, but we're going to see if we can get the main message out of each paragraph. And I want you to communicate with each other. That's the point of going live. And I want you to feel like you can also ask questions, and hopefully if I see the question, I'll be able to respond to it. I'm so glad you're here with me. This has been a kind of intense day. I had some dental work done today. And if you're talking about something that could be tempting you to believe that you are a body and only a body, have a little dental work. It gives you an opportunity to see if you can see yourself as spirit and more than a body when everything is drawing your attention to the body. Because the purpose of pleasure is to make you think you are a body. Ooh, it feels so good. The purpose of pain is also to make you think that you are a body. Ouch! Woo, that dental drill. But tonight we're going to talk about freedom of the body. We're going to talk about freedom of the body. I'm going to go through the first paragraph right now. Paragraph one. <clears throat> Knowing and love are inseparable. When you realize that knowing and love are inseparable, it is obvious that love is the only true wisdom, is love, is the only true wisdom. Love is the only true understanding. Love is the only true knowing, is love. Love is the great teacher. Love is the great demonstrator. Love is the great teacher. The great teacher is love. The great teacher is love. Love is the great teacher. And your loving relationships, the means of learning love. So it's through having a truly freeing relationship that you learn the meaning of love because love is freedom. So we're going to let freedom teach us. We're going to let love teach us means that we're going to let freedom teach us. And it's only in freedom that you experience true wisdom and loving relationships, which should be freeing relationships, you will learn the meaning of love. And when you learn the meaning of love, you are going to learn the meaning of freedom. That's kind of interesting. Because the way that many people do love is the last thing that they see love is as freedom. Many people see love as sacrifice, or they see love as something that limits their expression or limits someone else's expression. So we're going to get some lessons tonight that are going to be learned from love, and these lessons are going to go a long way in helping us release our remaining fears about when you get in love or experience love you're going to lose your individuality. Sometimes people feel like when they really love someone in a relationship, they're going to lose their individuality. Or when they allow themselves to merge with love, they're going to lose their little separated self. Do you know that each of you probably have found that as you love someone else, the more you love 
And the more you learn to possess a loved one, the more you realize that your loved one cannot be possessed. The more you try to possess a loved one, actually, the more you learn that you cannot possess them. While in a love relationship, that's where the greatest knowing is sought. And with willing partners in a loving relationship, that's where the greatest knowledge is attained. One's partner in such a relationship still transcends complete knowing. Even though we're going to learn a lot about love in a relationship, and even though it's great to have a partner who wants to learn about love with you, you will never completely know that person. What you will know is the relationship. But who in, uh, who we are and what we are, it is so vast. It is so unlimited. Who we really are is such a mystery. It's always expanding. Who we really are is always growing. So you will never completely, at the perceptual level, know completely everything there is to know about that other person even in a loving relationship but what you real what you will know is the relationship i think you will agree with me right that it is the nature of the average person to seek for more it is also the nature of life to exist in relationship it's also the nature of life to be better known through relationship. This is how knowing comes to be, through relationship. And knowing through relationship is not the second best situation. Knowing through relationship is how life is. Knowing through relationship is how love is. So that means that while your partner in love transcends total knowing, this too is how it is, that, that your partner transcends total knowing that the person that you're in a relationship with, and this can also be any kind of intimate one-on-one -on -one personal relationship, not just romantic relationships, who you are is beyond knowing, but that's how it's meant to be. Sometimes I hear people talk about being bored in their relationships. Basically, the only reason why you could be bored in a relationship is that there's a part of you that thinks it's gotten as much as it can get out of the relationship. Another reason why a relationship may appear to be boring it's because you put so many limits on each other out of fear and so many scripts on each other out of fear that the person cannot express themselves in a way other than how you want them to without you getting upset about it or becoming afraid or jealous or insecure. The fact that the person is a mystery, the fact that there's always something incredible and beautiful and wonderful about that person that you don't know about that can be revealed to you, that's what keeps the relationship exciting. That's why a loving relationship needs to be a relationship of freedom because in freedom, the true you, the authentic you, the you that's growing, the you that's expanding, that you can be expressed. You are meant to be love inviolate. Each of you is love inviolate. Yet rationally, yeah, you can be in a relationship and it can look like you're able to read somebody else's thoughts. Um, that when you're in a relationship, sometimes you can tell just the slightest change of mood in the person. 
Sometimes in relationships, you can get to the point that you can finish the other person's sentences. I was in a relationship one time that we were so in tune with each other, especially at the beginning of the relationship, that I had several instances that absolutely spooked me out. I asked a question or I made a comment in my mind, and my partner at that time responded out loud as if I had just shared that thought aloud or had just asked that question aloud. And that happened several times. And that was one of the things that really made me aware that minds are joined, especially when there is that period in the relationship that you feel totally free, you feel totally in tune, and the love energy is being expressed really, really strong. It's, like, it's almost like love and telepathy <clears throat> goes together. You know that the other person would lay down his or her life for you, rise to any occasion of your need. You're at that point where <clears throat> you and the other person share every fear and every joy with each other. When you have that kind of unity, when you have that kind of oneness, you actually start to experience the telepathy that can happen in a relationship. Brother Connor, want to say hello. Glad that you're online. Holly, love you. Thank you. CJ, glad to see you here tonight. Um, CJ says, yes, I don't even know me. As I change every day, knowing another fully would be impossible. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Hello, Jim. Thank you for joining us. Daniel, thank you for joining me. Just glad to see you online. Glad to see you online. Now, what about non-partnered love? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> non-partnered love also shares a knowing through relationship. The loved one might be on the other side of the country. The loved one might be separated by distance. The loved one might be separated by previous choices or past hurts. A, yet a relationship continues. So even if the person is not really around you anymore, the relationship continues. Even the person that you think of yourself as not being in a relationship with anymore. According to A Course of Love, the relationship continues. So in both partnered and non-partnered love relationships, the one you come to know in both partnered and non-partnered relationships, the one you come to know, the only one who does not transcend total knowing is yourself. And the same is true of your relationship with God. As in any love relationship, the desire to know God can be all-consuming as in any love relationship. See, in any love relationship, desire can be all-consuming. In a really intensely powerful, connected, joined relationship, the desire for love can be all-consuming. So even though God transcends knowing, your relationship with God is how you know both God and your real self. It's through your relationship with God that you know yourself. It's through your relationship with God that you know God. So it's through your relationship with love. God is love. So it's through your relationship with love that you know love. And it's through your relationship with love that you know yourself. So let me remind you of a key learning aid that we discussed earlier. You don't want to be other than who you are. You never want to be other than who you really are. Don't let any relationship, don't let any circumstance, don't let any situation tempt you to be other than who you really are. And do you know who you really are? According to A Course of Love, who you really are is love. You are love. You are free. Saying that you are love is the same as saying to you, you are free. Don't you, please let yourself let that in. You 
are free. You are love means that you are free. But freedom is of the mind. And through freeing your mind, that's how you free your body. Free your mind of fear. Free your mind of anger. Free your mind of depression. Free your mind of attack thoughts. Free your mind of any kind of thought that keeps you from feeling the joy and the connection and the ecstasy and the union with God. So you don't want to be other than who you really are. In paragraph 7, chapter 23, it says, No matter how much you grow to love another, no matter how much you grow to love somebody else, no matter how much you grow to love someone else, but that love does not cause you to be the other person. No matter how much you love another person, it doesn't cause you to be the other person. Um, you, it doesn't, I don't care how much I love you. It doesn't make me want to be you. What love does is it causes you to want to have a relationship with the other person. Love will make you want to have a relationship with the other person. But love doesn't make you want to be the other person. And this should tell you something about the nature of love. That I want a relationship with you, but I still want to be me. I think one of the reasons why people sometimes get very afraid to get in relationships with other people is because they think they're going to have to give up being who they are. That being in that relationship is going to call for them to have to be different in some way for the other person to be loving to them or for the other person to be happy. So you become afraid sometimes to join in a relationship because of the fear of losing the freedom to be who you really authentically are. And so, don't enter a relationship where you cannot enter. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if I am entering into a relationship with a person who only wants me to act out their fantasies and act out their script, then that person may not want me to express my natural qualities because my natural qualities doesn't fit in with their script. And so they are, they are, they are essentially saying to me, don't bring you into the relationship. Just bring my fantasy of you into the relationship. Just bring the thing I want you to be and the person I want you to be in the relationship. So... I can't enter a relationship that I can't enter. So I want to still be able to be myself. And just because I've entered into a relationship doesn't mean I should have to sacrifice myself. So when obsessively in love, when a person is obsessively in love, they may want the other person to be them, but rather the other, but rarely the other way around. What does that mean? That the way the average person does love is they want the other person to be more like them. Now, they don't really want to be like the other person, but the person wants the other, part, the other person in the relationship to be like them. It's not unusual for people to want everybody to have their views, their tendencies, their habits. I want you to share my world view. I want you to do things the way I would do it. That's not unusual for people to want their partner to be like them. But rarely do they want to give up who they are to be like the other person. So a course of love says, this is what it's caused you to make love God over in your own image and to try to do the same to others. In other words, rather than us trying to be like God, be as loving as God, be as giving as God. Rather than us try to be like God, 
we make God like us. So therefore we say God gets jealous and God gets angry and God punishes. So we have actually made God in our image. And the course of love says this comes of seeing oneself as an image rather than as a being existing in relationship. And this comes from ego rather than from the true self. So what is it that you long for? A course of love says what you long for is reunion. Because reunion too is relationship. Relationship is reunion. So when I say I want to be in a relationship with you, I'm saying that I want to be in a reunion with you. I want to join with you again. That's why I want to be in a relationship with you. Because a relationship is a reunion. So I want you to imagine a crowd of people in a small room. This is not relationship. When you attempted to think of relationship having to do with physical proximity, think of this example. Two bodies being under the same roof together that never communicate and never express love, that is not a relationship. And many people think a relationship is just having that body beside you everywhere you go, even though there's no real communication, sharing of purpose, expressing love. Now, I want you to imagine communities of faith. Around the world, people are united in belief, and not only in religious beliefs, ideology, politics, profession unite people. Parties and associations are formed to foster the idea of unity. But where does the unity come from? Unity comes through having a shared belief. Unity comes from having a shared belief. So the easiest relationships to be in is between two people who have a common state of mind and a shared purpose, and they share similar beliefs, even though their personality expressions may be completely individual. They have the same purpose. They speak the same language. They're looking at things from a similar viewpoint. That's the easiest way to join. Now, they're not necessary as is seen by the reality that they only form after the fact. In other words, belief fosters the form, and the form is then meant to foster the belief. So belief causes the form, and then the form is meant to foster the belief. Well, do you know that this is true of the body as well? Think of the way in which the word body is used, and this will be clear. The body politic, a body of knowledge. Belief fosters the form, and the form was meant to foster the belief. And so belief and form actually have a symbolic relationship. There's a symbolic relationship between belief and and the form it takes. Everything you see around you, every form that you see around you, where you are right now, including my form, a belief caused that form. So belief and thought create physical form. You're in the form of relationship that you're in because your beliefs and ideas are fostering or causing or forming the kind of relationships that you have. So understanding this loving relationship, understanding what a free relationship is, can help you to experience freedom of the body. Understanding what a loving relationship is can help you understand and experience freedom of the body. Freedom of the body. Freedom of the body, which is an extension in form of your belief in the personal I. Okay. That's not as complicated as it may sound. I believe I have a physical form that's separate from everybody else's physical form. I believe that I am an individual 
separate from everyone else. I believe I am an individual different from everyone else. So I have to have something to be separate and different in. So the body is caused by the idea of separation because you have to have something to be separate in. So the body is the physical expression of the idea that you are separate and that you are different. The body is an extension and form of the idea that there is a you, a personal you. So let me take a look and see if there are any questions or comments. Shanae, I'm glad that you are here. Stella, I see what you say. I've been trying to express who I really am almost all of my life. Thank you, Earl, for helping me to really understand that it's okay to be me. The, if you really want to have an easy life, Stella, the easiest life you can have is the life where you are being you because then you can be your natural self. Nothing that you are doing is a strain. Fear and conflict comes from behaving the way you think you should without really wanting to. In other words, you're not being yourself. You're not being your natural self in the moment. And when you're not your natural self in the moment, you can tell because you feel a lot of conflict and a lot of strain. So the easiest way to move through life is through being you. So you're right, Stella. It's okay to be you. And just like CJ says, totally hear you. Doesn't it feel great to hear that we are exactly as we should be? Hello, Keith. Glad that you have come online. All right. Okay. James, thank you for coming online and joining me also. Cheryl, it's good to see you. Okay. That's right, Cheryl. Freedom to be ourselves. Okay. So I'm going to keep on going. Great. Okay. Now. In paragraph 11, it says, belief fosters union. But union doesn't foster belief. Because in unity, belief is no longer required. When you are really in unity, it transcends belief. Belief fostered the union of atoms and cells into the form required by the belief in the separated self. Belief of another kind can foster the creation of form of another kind. What does that mean? Belief of another kind can foster the creation of form of another kind. Paragraph 12, chapter 23 says, If form is an extension of belief, if what you see in physical form is a, is a creation of belief, you can see why what you believe is critical to how you live with form. What you believe is very critical in the form of your life, the form, the physical form of your life right now, you really need to understand that your belief is very critical to the physical form of your life right now. We are speaking here of ways of thinking similar to those which you term induction and deduction. In the past, exercises have most often begun with an alteration of beliefs regarding form. Here, we have taken an opposite approach, beginning with exercises to alter your belief in your identity and concluding with exercises to alter your belief in form. This is consistent with our primary focus. And what is our primary focus? Our primary focus is on learning from the heart. Our focus is not so much on learning through the analytical process learning through the reasoning mind, learning through the rationing mind. In A Course of Love, we are trying to learn primarily through the heart. We want to learn from the heart. The mind goes from what's small to what's large, but the heart goes from the large to the small. Only the wholehearted can see the, con the connection of everything. When you have a whole heart, you can see the connection you have to 
everything. I repeat, belief of another kind can foster the creation of form of another kind. If you want your experience, Earl, if you want your experience to have a different form, if you want your experience to have a different appearance, if you want to have different physical appearances and experiences, you need to give yourself another kind of belief. If you're ready for a change in your physical reality, it's time for you to give yourself new beliefs. From your new beliefs, you will start to create a different form of your experience. A wholehearted belief in the truth about yourself is what it's required to cause another kind of experience. So I need a wholehearted belief in the truth about myself to have a totally new physical experience. It requires a belief that is my mind joined with my feelings, my mind joined with my heart, a new belief that is a combination of my mind and my heart. That is what's necessary. A wholehearted belief in the truth about myself. That's what's required if I really want a really new experience. That's what's necessary now. That's what will change the world. What will change the world is you having a wholehearted belief in the truth about you. And the truth about you is that you are free. What's the truth about you is that you are not a body. You are free. The truth about you is that you are spirit. The truth about you is that you are love. You are loving and you are lovable and you are unlimited and you are connected to God. You are joined with God. You are joined to source. You are abundant and abundant is your, abundance is your natural state. That is the truth about you. So if you want a new physical experience, Raj, and my mighty companion that's with me right now, we both have to have a new wholehearted belief about ourselves, about who we truly are. That's what's going to change the world. That's what's going to be necessary to change the world. In paragraph 14, chapter 23, it says, Belief of, belief of another kind is what miracles are all about, belief of another kind. Having new kinds of beliefs, having another kind of belief, that's what miracles are all about. It is what you are all about as a miracle worker. It's for you to be a person that possesses a new kind of belief, a belief that's based on unity, a belief that's based on union, a belief that's based on love, a belief that's based on extension, a belief that's based on freedom, a belief that's based on unlimited spirit. As a miracle worker, you have to have another kind of belief. For you to change your beliefs is the miracle. If we change our beliefs, it's a miracle. If we change the way we think, it's a freaking miracle. If we change the way we look at things and want to be happy more than we want to be right, it's a miracle. So A Course of Love says, for you to change your beliefs, is the miracle that we are after. The result we're seeking from this course is what? For you to change your beliefs. The purpose of this course is to help you change your beliefs. Now, obviously, your belief in who and what you are is the basis for your entire foundation, a foundation previously built on fear. Whatever you believe you are, that's the foundation of your perception of things. Everything about your experience, all the needs that you think you have are based on what you think you are. And who you think you are determines what you think your needs are. And they also determine what your beliefs are. In the past, the Course of Love says that your belief in who and what you are is the basis for your entire foundation, but it was a foundation previously built on what? It was a foundation previously built on fear. So clearly, belief in the body was easily translated into a belief in the validity of fear. Because don't you know that if you were to really look at it and be honest with yourself, you will see that the body is the seat of fear. 
that all the fear that we have is around the body, uh, housing the body, clothing the body, feeding the body, protecting the body, trying to get the body to be acceptable and attractive to other bodies, um, defending the body. So actually, the body and belief in the body as being who you are is actually the belief in the validity of fear because it seems very valid to have fear around the protection and defense and the taking care of, of the body. So when you are free of this misperception that you are a body, uh, when you are free of the inaccurate belief that you are a body, that's when your body will be freed. Your body will be freed when the body is no longer seen as who you are, but the body is seen as a means to express who and what you are. That the body is seen as a way to communicate. That the body is seen as a way to join minds and hearts in love. But you are not a body. You have a body. And the connection to believing that you are a body, that, that thought that you are only a body that has to be protected, defended, and taken care of, that is the cause of fear. That is the basis of fear. So when you want to take your body and take it beyond the, the being the cause of fear, the way that you keep your body from being the cause of fear is to see your body as a means of service, a means of sharing the truth. Like what I'm doing right now, I'm using my body to be a means of service rather than using, rather than making my body and everything about my body the goal, the purpose, my focus. What I'm doing now is I'm using my body as a means of serving you. So I'm using my body as a means of serving truth. That's what will free the body. Using the body for service, that's what we will free the body. So if you have any questions and any comments, don't hesitate to share them in the comments during this class and gathering. Like Cheryl says, it's exhausting to do all this with the body. And she reiterated that the body is a vessel for communication. The body is a vessel for communication. The body is a means for learning. The body is a learning device. The body is a means for learning. It's a means for service. It's a means for loving. I'm using my body right now to share these thoughts of truth and love. And that is the proper use of a body. It's to share thoughts of freedom, the idea of freedom. Don't forget that freedom is love. Freeing your perception from your nearly immutable belief in form will allow for all changes in form required by the miracle. I'll say that again. Freeing your perception from your belief in form will allow for all changes in form required by the miracle. So when we take our beliefs and just stop focusing on the body and the physical form, that will actually allow for the changes in the body and the changes in form that's required by the miracle. And the miracle is nothing but a correct perception, a true perception. So when you say miracle, you're talking about a correct perception, a true perception. So form is not constant, but form is a result of belief. So form will always change. There's nothing in the world of perception. There's nothing in the world of form that is not going to change. Everything in the world of form, every form is going to change. The form of your relationship is going to change. The form of everything in your life is going to change. Everything in the world of perception, the form is going to change. And so if you want to move toward love and move toward peace, Except that everything but the truth is going to change. Everything in the world of perception is going to change. Everything about your partner is going to change. Everything about anybody you know, the form is going to change. 
While you believe that belief is the result of form, it is not. Form is the result of belief. Belief isn't the result of form. And so belief is not only capable of changing form, but also is necessary in order to change form. So if you want to change anything about any form of anything in your life, belief can change form. What you believe can change the physical form of anything that you are experiencing right now. What you believe is capable of changing form. It's your beliefs that's necessary to change form. History has shown you that what you believe is possible becomes possible. What you believe is possible becomes possible. Science has proven the link between researcher and research findings. Still, you find it difficult to believe that what is possible depends upon what you can imagine being possible. What's possible in your life? What's possible in this situation that you're going through right now is what you imagine being possible whatever you imagine being possible in this situation that you're in right now whatever you imagine can be possible that's what will be possible you must cease to see the difficulty and begin to see the ease with which what you can imagine becomes reality Stop focusing on how difficult it would be for what you want to become reality for you. And focus on how easy it could be for what you imagine to become manifest and reality. What you want to manifest can be easy to manifest. What you want to manifest can become easy to manifest. Begin to see the ease with which what you can imagine becomes reality. You have no capabilities that do not serve you. You don't have any capabilities that don't serve you because all your capabilities were created to serve you. 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 The ability to imagine is such a capability freely and equally given to everyone. You have the ability to imagine. I have the ability to imagine. You have the ability to imagine. I have the ability to imagine. So imagination is, should be linked to true vision. Your imagination should be linked to true seeing because it exercises the combined capabilities of the mind and the heart. So when you truly imagine, it should come from your heart and from your mind combined. So what you think and what you desire in your heart and what you feel in your heart must com combine in your imagination. Imagination is linked to true vision. Imagination exercises the combined capabilities of the mind and heart. Imagination is related to perception. And imagination can lead the way in changing how you perceive of yourself your imagination can help you change how you see the world around you. Use your imagination not to imagine things that frighten you. Use your imagination not to imagine things that depress you. Use your imagination to think and see. Imagine the ease that you could have your experience manifest for you. Beyond imagination is the spark that allows you to conceive of what never was conceived of before. Beyond imagination is a spark that allows you to conceive of what never was conceived of before. 
So if you want your life to be brand new, Raj, if you want your life to be brand new, mighty companion, realize that beyond your imagination is a spark that allows you to conceive of what was never conceived of before. There are things that are beyond your conception, and you would love to also have the things that you can see in your imagination, and you all would also want to be open to what could happen to you that's beyond your imagination. This is called inspiration. Do what you are inspired to do. Start to express yourself from inspiration. And when you are inspired, you are in spirit. And when you are fatigued, you are dispirited. If you feel tired and worn out, you are dispirited. If you feel inspired, you are in spirit. If you feel inspired, you are in spirit. Inspiration is the infusion of spirit. When you feel inspiration, it's the infusion of spirit. Taking the creation of form backward, it leads to this conclusion. Now listen to this. Spirit precedes inspiration. Inspiration precedes imagination. Imagination precedes belief, and belief precedes form. Spirit comes before inspiration. Inspiration comes before imagination. Imagination comes before belief. And belief comes before form. So spirit is your more direct link with the one source called God. Because spirit is directly from the source. While form is just a byproduct of spirit, your spirit is directly from the source. But form is a byproduct of spirit. Thus, form is actually once removed. Form is rather further away from the source. Again, working backward, however, the form you have created is still a step necessary to the return to God. The physical body you have created, the physical form you have created, everything around you in form is still a step that's necessary in your return to God, in your return to love. Everything you have physically formed is necessary. Everything you have physically formed, everything that is physically formed, including your body, is a necessary step to your return to source. Your physical experience, the physical form, it's a necessary step for your return to God. The necessary step is that of, and guess what? The necessary step is moving beyond form, recognizing and acknowledging form for what form is, and then continuing on, working backward to change your belief. Work backward to change your belief. I want you to allow your imagination to serve you and allow spirit to fill you. Work backward to change your belief Allow imagination to serve you and spirit to feel you. Allow imagination to serve you and spirit to feel you. Allow imagination to serve you and spirit to feel you. I allow spirit to to feel me up. Allow spirit to feel me. Allow imagination to serve me. I allow imagination to serve me. I allow imagination to serve me. I allow spirit to feel me. I 
and I allow imagination to serve me. Imagination serve me. Imagination serve me. Imagination serve me. Imagination serve me. My imagination serves me. Your imagination, it serves you. Allow spirit to fill you up. Allow spirit to fill you up. Allow your imagination to serve you. Allow your imagination to serve you. You then can move forward again. It's time for you to move forward again. You have to take form beyond its limited parameters. You have to take form beyond its limited parameters. Become a miracle worker. In order to become a true perception worker, that's what a miracle worker is. A true perception worker. A miracle worker is a true perception worker. Allow yourself to be taken beyond the body. Allow yourself to go beyond the limitations that you think a body has. Become a miracle worker. Are you willing to become a miracle worker? The body encompasses. Do you know that your body holds the belief? Do you know your body is the composite of your beliefs? Do you know that your body is the composite of your beliefs? My body is the composite of my beliefs. Your body is the composite of your beliefs. The totality, the totality, the totality, the totality. The body will continue to hold former beliefs as well as new beliefs. So I'm telling you, your body has old beliefs and your body has new beliefs and your body will hold the old beliefs as well as the new beliefs until your old beliefs are purged. Purge your old beliefs that don't serve you. It's time to purge your old beliefs. Do you know that your memories are stored in the cells of your body? Your memories are stored in your physical body. You have old beliefs in your body. You got new beliefs also in your body. You have to purge those old fearful beliefs, those old separation beliefs. It's time to purge the old beliefs and let the new beliefs come in. The purging of the old beliefs will free space for the new beliefs. Letting go of your old beliefs will make space for your new beliefs. A course of love is full of new beliefs. A course of love is, a, is full of, 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 is full of new beliefs. You don't have to go far. The new beliefs, the new beliefs are in a course of love. Study a course of love and you will get the new beliefs that you need. The new beliefs allow your form to reflect what and who you are in terms that coincide with the you whom you have always been. Give yourself new beliefs that correspond with the you that you have always been. Now, who is the you that you've always been? You've always been loved. You've always been powerful. You've always been innocent and you've always been free. You have always been loved. You have always been loving. You have always been abundant. You have always been powerful. You have always been... Now, I don't know how to tell you this, but there's no quick route to this purging, to this letting go. Letting go of your old limiting beliefs it is the most individual of accomplishments. No one can do that but you. As you learn your beliefs, just as you learn the beliefs that you have right now, just as you learn the beliefs that you have right now, you must unlearn your beliefs. Now, as you begin the process of unlearning, as you begin the process of purging, you may feel tested. When you say that you're finally going to really change and let go of your old beliefs, you may feel tested. 
You are not being tested. You are not being tested. You may feel like you're being tested, but you're not being tested. It's going to seem like you're being tested when you say you want to change your old beliefs, but you're not being tested. What you, what's happening, no matter what's happening in your life right now, it's you being given an opportunity for unlearning. You're not being tested. You're being given an opportunity, Raj. You, you're not being tested, mighty companion. You're being given an opportunity. What kind of opportunity are you being given? You're being given an opportunity for unlearning your old beliefs, to learn that a previously held belief is no longer valid. So if, so if a relationship walks up to you and it looks like it's the same thing that you've gone through and it's some kind of a test, tell yourself, this is an opportunity to purge an old belief about myself that I'm not going to support anymore by not going into agreement with any kind of mistreatment or attack. These learning opportunities call for a period of engagement with life. So if you're going to have these learning opportunities, you can't separate yourself from life. You can't become a hermit. You can't become a recluse. You can't bury your head in the sand and pretend that you don't know or don't want to know what's going on in the world around you. These learning opportunities, what learning opportunities? To let go of these old limiting beliefs that block love and block your happiness and your freedom. It calls for a period of engagement with life. It's time for you to have a period of engagement with life. Many of you will have begun to experience unlearning opportunities even while your study of this course may have led you to turn inward and attempt to disengage from life some of you still have begun to experience unlearning opportunities. A period of disengagement with life cannot be avoided. A period of engagement with life cannot be avoided. You cannot avoid engagement with life. However, and your attempts to avoid it will only cause an increase in feelings generated by experiences of duality. So if you try not to engage in life, it will actually increase your anxiety. It's actually through extension, being engaged with your life, that allow you to take advantage of the unlimited opportunities to let go of old beliefs that limit you. The more that you engage with life, the more that you extend and take advantage of these unlimited opportunities to let go of old beliefs and purge old beliefs by engaging in life, the more you engage in life, it will allow you to have less anxiety. The more you try to uh, disengage from life, separate yourself from life, it's actually going to increase the feelings of anxiety. While you, while you, while you hold conflicting beliefs inside of yourself, you're going to be conflicted and affected by polarities such as good and bad as you hold conflicting beliefs inside yourself. That's why you feel conflicted. When you have conflicting beliefs inside yourself, that's why you feel conflicted. That means you are affected by the duality, the polarity, going back and forth between love and fear and peace and conflict and lack and abundance and sickness and health. That's coming from conflicted beliefs. That's creating polarity. And that polarity is creating all the pain and unhappiness and fear that you are experiencing right now. Unlearning allows you to purge old beliefs so that only one set of beliefs is operative within you. So when you get through with the purging of the fear thought to the point that you don't have it anymore, then you only have one set of beliefs Beliefs based on oneness and unity and love. And these beliefs will produce form in your life that reflects union and peace and love. And you no longer have that old thought system based on separation and fear. So you're not going in back and forth between the two anymore because you only think one way. At some point, you have to let go of duality and think in only one way. And the one way to think is in the way of love. The one way to think is in the way of love. And thinking in the way of love is thinking in the way of freedom.
you only, you only want one set of beliefs operating within you. Just one set of beliefs operating within you. This is the only route to the certainty that you seek. Letting go of the old way of thinking, embracing the new way of thinking. That's what's going to lead to true conviction. True conviction cannot be attained without the experience of unlearning and purging. It's through unlearning the old limited perspectives and perceptions of the world and of yourself. It's through unlearning and purging that that you would start to have true conviction. Let me take a look here and see what else we have said here. Cheryl says, I so understand and believe this, but it brings up fear. That's natural. CJ says, shifting my belief from challenging, difficult, and seeing those desires as easy to achieve, that in itself is a huge belief shift. Cheryl says, I desire easy. June says, hi, everyone. Good to be here. Good to have you here, June. Thanks for joining us. CJ's getting a lot of love tonight. She deserves it. Inspiration, imagination, belief, and form. And Anastasia says it's important to empty the teacup. And when you're really doing the unlearning process, it can definitely be intense. So don't forget, if you have any questions in the comments, I'm open to it. I'm open to you sharing. And I'm perfectly okay if you just want to listen. Sometimes it's about just letting it in. So I'm now on paragraph 25. Paragraph 25 says, All unlearning opportunities are opportunities for miracle readiness. All unlearning opportunities. Everything that you meet when you're engaged in your life is an unlearning opportunity. And each unlearning opportunity is an opportunity for a miracle. There is no trick to identifying unlearning opportunities. From this point forward, I assure you, all experiences will be thus until learning is no longer needed. So, all of your experiences for the rest of your physical life will be unlearning opportunities. Every day you're going to go out and experience your unlearning opportunities. An opportunity to let go of old beliefs Purge old ideas that no longer serve you in any way. All day long, you are getting opportunities to have unlearning. If you will remember that the one exercise for your mind, the one exercise in the course of love, there is only one exercise. And that exercise is to dedicate all your thought to union. I dedicate all thought to union. I dedicate all thought to joining. I dedicate all thought to union. I dedicate all thought to joining. I dedicate all thought to union. You dedicate all thought to union. You dedicate all thought to union. I dedicate all thought to union. I dedicate all thought to union. If you do that, you will keep your mind engaged. If you dedicate all your thoughts to joining, if you dedicate all your thoughts to union, you will find that you will have less resistance to unlearning. If you dedicate all your thoughts to union, if you dedicate all your thought to unlearning, you will have less resistance. When you feel resistance, and of course your mind will resist unlearning, what it has striven so hard to learn, your mind is not going to want to let go of all the old thoughts and beliefs and ideas that is learned. So when you feel resistance, return your dedication to union. When you feel resistance, return your dedication to union, to joining. So this is what you do when you feel resistance. Would you like to know what to do when you feel resistance, Raj? Would you like to know what to do when you're feeling resistance, my mighty companion? First, you acknowledge that your mind is feeling resistance. 
my mind is feeling a lot of resistance right now. I'm feeling a lot of contraction right now. I'm feeling a lot of fear and anxiety and upset right now. That is a sign that there's some unlearning going on. I feel a lot of resistance. There's a lot of unlearning going on. I feel a lot of resistance. I feel unlearning going on because I feel a lot of resistance. I feel a lot of unlearning going on because I feel a lot of existence. Acknowledge that you feel the resistance. Acknowledge that you feel resistance. Acknowledge that you're in your ego, but do not engage it. It's like looking at a cup on the table and you acknowledge the cup is on the table. The cup of resistance is on the table. But do not pick it up. Do not engage it. Do not analyze it. Just look at it, but don't use it. Knowledge you have resistance and tell yourself there's some serious unlearning going on right now, but don't engage in it. What will happen when you look at each situation as a challenge to your beliefs? What will happen when you look at each situation as a challenge to your beliefs? If you do not remember that you are involved, if you do not remember that you are involved, if you do not remember that you are involved, involved in what? You are involved in a process of unlearning. If you don't remember that you're involved in a process of unlearning, that will lead to the conviction that you have so long sought, you will indeed feel tested and will try to take control of the learning situation. If you don't realize it's an unlearning opportunity, acknowledge what's coming up for you, don't engage in it, then you're going to feel tested and then you're going to try to take control of the situation. You're going to try to take control of the learning situation. But the key to unlearning is not taking control. The key to unlearning your limited old beliefs is in not taking control. What you term as being in control, what you call being in control, is simply another way of saying acting on old beliefs. So when you want to take over because you feel tested and you want to be in control again, what you're going to do is start acting on your old beliefs again. So trying to take control means you're going to start acting from your old beliefs again. The old beliefs that you say you're trying to purge. The old beliefs that you say you're trying to unlearn. If you take control, what's meant by you taking control, that just means you're going to go back to trying to do it the way you've always tried to do it. And the truth is, the old way of doing it is always based on something to somebody else outside of yourself needing to change in order for you to be happy. Taking control means you going back to that old belief of trying to make people act out your script, blaming something outside of yourself, not taking responsibility for your feelings, going back to the old beliefs. When you say you're going to be in control of it again, you're simply saying, I'm going to act on my old beliefs. As long as you attempt to remain in control, as long as you attempt to remain in control, old beliefs will not be purged as long as you attempt to remain in control. And what does it mean for you to remain in control, Raj? What does it mean for you to remain in control, mighty companion? It means you're going to go back to trying to do it the way you used to do it. You're going to go back to the old beliefs of the world. You're going to try to operate according to your old ideas, the very ideas that you say you want to unlearn, the very ideas that you say you want to let go of so that you can have the kind of beliefs that produce the kind of physical reality that gives you total joy and peace. So when you feel tested sometimes, because there's some new unlearning opportunity that has shown up, but you're not seeing it as an opportunity. You're seeing it as a test. And when you see opportunities as tests, then you will be tempted to want to take over again and be in control again. And that means you're going to try to do it the way you've always tried to do it in the past. So attempting to exert control over learning situations, you trying to exert control over your learning situations is a reflection of belief that you have nothing to learn. An attitude of openness is required. An attitude of openness is required. An attitude of openness is required. Is an attitude of openness is required for unlearning. You need an attitude of being open. 
Now, one of the things you can say to yourself in order to be open, Raj, and mighty companion, is to tell yourself, what I know may not be all there is to know. What I know may not be all there is to know. What I know may not be all there is to know. That will help you open your mind. That's right, Blue. Love's will for us is perfect happiness. Love is in our mind because love is all we see. Love is all we see when we let go and purge our old beliefs based on fear and conflict and separation from God. You know, that's what's necessary for love to be all we see. Because when we say that to people who are in fear, they don't see love as all they see. They see their old beliefs. They see their fearful learnings and programs. And so what we want to support them in doing is understanding that the life situation that you're in right now is an opportunity for you in, to engage. And engaging in your life, you may feel like you're being tested, but you're not being tested. You're being presented with an opportunity to let go of old beliefs, to purge old limited ideas about yourself that you're ready to release. Control opposes openness. Mastery comes through the process of both unlearning and learning anew. This is but another way of stating that which was stated in A Course in Miracles, which is resign as your own teacher. Resign as your own teacher. Resign as your own teacher. Resign. Resign as your own teacher. And let the love, the truth, the higher self, the Christ self, the God self, your divine self, let it be your teacher. Let love be your teacher. You resign as your own teacher. The desire to control is the desire to remain your own teacher, is the desire to control, is the desire to remain your own teacher, or for you to choose your teachers and for you to choose your learning situations, that is another example of your desire to control, is to think you can actually choose your teachers and to think that you can actually choose the learning situations. Neither can occur if you would truly choose to. Neither can occur if you would truly choose to change your beliefs. Choose to change your beliefs and move on to the new or the truth. Please choose, decide, choose and decide to change your beliefs. Within the course of love, there are new beliefs, new ideas and new thoughts that you can use. Right in the course of love. Anastasia says, let the divine be your teacher. Let the divine be your teacher. Stella says, I will let go of how I believe things should be. That is the way that you purge yourself from old beliefs. That's how you do it. Change your beliefs and move on to the new. Change your beliefs and move on to the truth. Look at it in another way. This process has much in common with forgiveness the action associated with it raises it to a level similar to a level of atonement. And atonement is the correction of error. When you say you're ready to atone, you're saying that I'm ready to let my errors be corrected. I'm ready to have an undoing of the old limited ideas and beliefs about myself that keep me from having the perfect happiness that God wills for me. We're talking about an undoing, an undoing that's accompanied by a new way of doing things. Undo your old ways of looking at things. And be willing to learn the new way of doing things. You can learn the new way of doing things with the divine teacher, love. And you can learn the new way of doing things with a new curriculum. A course of love is a new curriculum. Study it with all your mind and heart. 
and you will receive the new beliefs that will give you a brand new reality. You, in the process of unlearning both forgiveness, which is correct perception, and atonement, which is the undoing of error, can occur. So you want correct perception and the undoing of errors. You want correct perception and the undoing of erroneous ways of looking at things. You want correct perception, which is forgiveness, and you also want the undoing of the old way of looking at things, an old way that causes guilt, anger, and fear. The atonement is the undoing of that. So how do you go to the next level? Would you like to know how you go to the next level? You recognize that your false beliefs were the result of faulty learning. Your fearful, unhappy beliefs you recognize as being the result of faulty learning. Faulty learning, faulty beliefs, wrong beliefs, beliefs that are not based on love and truth. These beliefs result in faulty learning. And faulty learning results in an unhappy, fearful, dissatisfied, frightening physical experience. So as unlearning is replaced by new learning, as you let your old fearful learning go, and it's replaced by this new learning that you are receiving right now, judgment falls away. Now what makes judgment fall away? What makes judgment fall away is having your innocence established. And we are establishing that you are innocent. Listen to me. You are innocent. You are innocent. You are without sin. You are without guilt. You are innocent. 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 Can a child be found guilty when the child has not yet learned that which is needed for right action? You're not guilty because you haven't really learned the right way of looking at things. So, so don't be so hard on yourself. It's not like you heard the right way of learning. It's not like you got the, the right loving learning from the time you were a child. So you might ask, how do you learn what you have failed to learn previously? What are the lessons? What is the curriculum? How will you know when you have achieved your learning objective? How will you know? Yet how can you become a master of what another would teach of lessons another would select the answer is this your life must become your teacher your life must become your teacher your life must become your teacher your life must become your teacher, become your teacher. and you its devoted pupil your life must become your teacher, and you must become its pupil. Your life must become your teacher, and you must become its devoted pupil. Here is a curriculum right now that you are living. Your curriculum, that's what you are living right now. Here is a curriculum designed specifically for you. Your life is a curriculum designed specifically for you. It's a curriculum that only you can master. Your life is a curriculum that only you can master. Your life is a curriculum that only you can master that was designed specifically for you. Do you know only your own life experiences only your own life experiences have led to the learning you have accumulated and translated into beliefs. Your beliefs are learning. Your belief, your beliefs are the learnings that you have accumulated since you have been here. Your beliefs 
are the learning that you have accumulated and translated since you were born. So now it's time to let your life, love, be your teacher so that you can let go and unlearn the old beliefs and allow the brand new ones that will bring you miracles. Only your own life experiences will reverse the process. So don't oppose your life. Engage in your life. Your life is a specialized curriculum that was designed specifically for you to give you unlearning opportunities that would allow you to have love pervade every aspect of your experience and that is freedom and that is happiness. Wow! I'm going to do a quick recap in just a minute and just breathe and let that in. I want to thank you for joining me tonight for this course of love gathering, this course of love class. I'm a, I appreciate you so much for allowing me to be a facilitator and a teacher of this process with you and for you. And this is what I do in the world and it is my pleasure to do this in the world. And if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation to support my teaching ministry, then just go to earlpurdy.com. I truly, truly appreciate your generosity and your support. Also, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions, in which I work with you to help you change the beliefs that you have that must be unlearned that's limiting you. I have thousands, I have over a thousand videos on YouTube and also on my website that are there for free, available to you, so that you can get the new beliefs. So. I'm making everything that I have as freely available as I possibly can. And for those of you who are open to it, I also use my knowledge of astrology and numerology, which I love, which is in its truest level is very, a very divine teachings, another way for spirit to communicate with us. So, and all the information about my services on my website, Earl Purdy. Dot com. Okay, so do we have any takeaways before I do the last part of this evening's gathering? Anything that you heard that you'd like to share that you would like to remember as a takeaway? And I'd be glad to share it with everybody else that's online. So remember this. Belief is what's causing your physical reality. Love is the greatest teacher. You learn what love is through relationship. But you don't have to be afraid of losing who you are as an individual. You don't have to want everybody else around you to be exactly like you. You can also support their freedom and their love. The way to have the kind of physical experience that you really want to have is to change your beliefs. Your beliefs foster form. When you say that you're going to change your beliefs in order to have the love and happiness that you know you deserve, you may feel tested sometimes. But you are not being tested by God. You're not being tested by the universe right now. You are being given an opportunity to unlearn your old limited ways of looking at things. Trudy says, love is merely the expression of the unity that already exists between us. That is very true. The love is already there. So your life must become your teacher. And you must become the devoted pupil of your life. Your life must become your teacher. 
and you must become the devoted pupil of your life and give yourself new beliefs about yourself. The Course of Love is another wisdom text that's full of new teachings about yourself. Please share these videos. I would really appreciate that to, for us to join with more mighty companions. Your life is a curriculum designed specifically for you. Your life is a curriculum that only you can master, but you don't have to master it alone. Now remember, when you feel tested and you feel challenged, there's going to be a temptation for you to take control again. Now what does it mean for you to take control again? What does it mean for you to take control again? What it means for you to take control again is you're going to say, I'm going to take over. And you're going to go back to trying to handle things the way you learned to handle things in the past using your old beliefs. When you try to take control, it's just you trying to do it the way you've done it in the past. Understand that life is going to give you your teaching. Life is going to give you your teachers. Your life is going to give you your curriculum. Your life is going to present you with the learning situations and circumstances that you need to unlearn every limited, limited belief that you have so that you can experience love you deserve and you can experience the happiness you deserve and you can experience the abundance that you deserve and you can experience the joy that you deserve. And your relationships, you can come to know yourself more, but remember, you will never completely know the person that you're with. The person that you are with is an unlimited powerful mystery. The more you try to possess them, the more you're going to see that you can't do it. That is fear. Possession is fear. Trying to possess someone is fear. That's part of the old belief system. Only your own life experiences will reverse the process from fear to love. Your life is your friend. Your life is your teacher. Your life is divinely designed to give you the best opportunities to change your mind. Change your mind. When you change your mind, you change your physical experiences. Don't forget that belief comes before form. Don't forget that inspiration comes from spirit. And to be inspired means that you are filled with spirit. Thank you. I love you. And tell yourself before you sign off, and before I sign off, tell yourself and this. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles. You are entitled to miracles. And if you want to free your body, you must free your mind. To free your body, free your mind. To free your body, free your mind. Free your body, that means free your mind, free your body. Free your mind, free your body. Free your mind, free your body. Your body is a learning device. Your body isn't you. It's time to move beyond form. It's time to move beyond form. You are more than your body. You are spirit. You are love. You are more than your body. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me. You are awesome. Yes, that's right, Yvette. Free your mind. Free your body. That's what I'm saying to you. June, thanks for sending me the love. I love you, mighty companions. And may the course be with you. Yeah.